legalizefreedom.com. Why are we here? Where do we come from? Where are we going? From the nature of reality to the future of humanity. Listen without limits. Unchain your brain. Change your thinking. Change your life. LegalizeFreedom.com Greetings and welcome once again to LegalizeFreedom.com. My name is Greg Moffat and today I am hosting a roundtable discussion with the authors of the book The Red Pill Revolution. What have you discovered that the world you have been born into has been precisely designed in order to keep you unhappy, stressed and struggling, all for the benefit of a tiny minority of others? The promise of comfort, security and peace is always just around the next corner. Government you can trust, corporations that play fair, clean food, health care, being cared for in your old age, a world that feels like it's getting better for each generation. Have you noticed that you can never quite seem to get there? Is this the way that you feel in your heart that human beings are meant to live? If your answer is no, then the red pill revolution is for you. It's not an easy pill to swallow, but it is necessary for anyone who wishes to navigate the chaotic and predatory culture we live in today. We all know something is just not right. We can sense the imbalance, injustice and insanity. But what can we actually do about it? Hello and welcome Phil, Ben, Jeremy, John and Graham today to LegalizeFreedom.com. We're going to be discussing your book, The Red Pill Revolution, which was recently published. Before we dive into that, uh, Phil, perhaps you could just tell us how you guys came together and your common interests and how the book got published. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for having us on, Greg. Nice to speak to you again. Been on here on my own, but um, not with these amazing guys. Well, yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting story. I started off um, um, uh, doing various little talks online and interviews and, and whatever, and um, one day I was uh, talking upstairs at a local pub uh, of sort of ancestral diet and lifestyle and whatever talk and uh, a guy wandered in with some orange shades on and I thought hang on a minute you know he's onto blue blockers and stuff and he knows probably probably what he's talking about and um, that was Graham Norbury and we became friends and um, then a little while afterwards in my sort of 100% carnivore and beyond group um, this this chap called uh, uh, Jeremy Ayres turned up and he was clearly incredibly knowledgeable. He was funny and he was fascinating with his answers to people. And uh, he ended up interviewing me on, on his um, <clears throat> on his Naturally Better show. And, uh, and, and we became friends too. And in the meantime, I'd made friends with uh, Ben Hunt here. And Ben is um, Ben is a, a bit of a whiz online and has written lots of um, e-books and been very successful with those, and also had a marketing channel. And he he had contacted me to say whether you know he could maybe help me out with some of my marketing stuff. And uh, one day we Graham and uh, Jeremy and I got together and decided to go over to Ben's house and uh, and chat with him about some plans for um, teaming up because our knowledge is sort of We've come to all these conclusions, the same, the same conclusions, but from very different angles. And, and so that gives us a great perspective on it. You sort of triangulate this knowledge. And Jeremy had been out in, in America helping, um, a, a wonderful lady called Dawn Gusty with, with some health issues and, and become friends with, with her husband, John, who's here now. And he turned out to be the most amazing addition to the team and our band manager. And uh, John is a, a great bass player and uh, he has a fantastic um, 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 scintillating history in the music business and in publishing. And and uh, he's he's become a great friend and he helped us out so much with the publication of the book. 
and he's also incredibly uh, knowledgeable about many of the uh, <clears throat> the issues that, that that we cover in the book. And uh, I thought that I was a pretty good writer, having written a few books until I met Ben. And uh, Ben put this book together from all many chats that we had on various subjects, sort of isolating each chapter and um, discussing it at, at, at great length. And Ben put it all down beautifully. And um, that's that's how the Red Pill Revolution came about, really. Now, I set out in my recorded introduction basic, a basic kind of overview of the content of the book, you know, the main thrust of its points and arguments. Um, when I read it, it really rekindled in me a fundamental question that I've basically been asking all my life, but I, I first recall asking it in the early days of my schooling when I was still in primary school, still in elementary school, as they say in the States. It wasn't just having to go to school, but it was everywhere I turned. And at that time, a lot of the rules and regulations didn't so much apply to me, but I saw them apply to the adults around me and how restricted their lives were. They didn't always see this. My question was, when I was constantly being told, oh, no, you can't do this, you can't do that, you must do this, you must do that. Okay, but where did I sign up for this? I was born and slowly became aware and then self-aware and I, I didn't actually agree to all this so is there anywhere I can go is there anything I can do to not participate in this so just reading your book again it brought it back to me that this is humans are being born all the time you know on this planet who are running up against this but very few ask that question okay so it's like what is there outside of this techno information matrix that we now find ourselves in it's like very few people ever wonder if the universe ends and if it does what's beyond that if you see what i mean so but we find ourselves all of us you guys and myself asking this question i feel anyway so perhaps you can just you a few of you can give me your take on this but that's what the book brought home to me was this question i've been asking all my life is why everything is so narrow and restricted and what about my vision for human life and my vision for, for even just for my own life, not necessarily for yours or anyone else's, you know, why is this thing that was pre-prepared for me, this limited menu that I have to choose from, why is that all there is apparently? Well, uh, <clears throat> Jeremy here, Greg, and thank you so much for in inviting us on. Um, you know, it's a, that's an excellent way to start because what, what brought uh, myself and the guys together, including John, um, was what what I commonly refer to as dis ease, which is what the, where the word is truly from, um, you know, not at ease. And you know, after thirty years of research and helping thousands of people, and and Phil has seen this himself in his own uh, healing journey, and then going on to helping many, many, many others with conditions that, frankly, the doctors really don't understand it not in the sense of what's really causing it how to heal it um is that we recognized that you know if you're going to describe what dis ease is you could start with it you have strayed away from truth and it, we believe that there is a resonance with truth and we also believe that all people i've traveled extensively and worked with tribal people and all number of things all people around the world, no matter their education, religion, uh, or, or position, seem to um, be very, very upset if they find out they've been lied to. It seems to be the universal response of a, a great emotional response, and then <clears throat> to trust whoever lied to them is a, is a great task. And so... Um, we find that in the pursuit of getting people well and let alone thriving, and let's face it, if you ask anybody around the world in any country, is your nation in the last 50 years sicker or healthier, everybody answers before you finish the sentence. They're sicker, much sicker. So in order for us to really be able to heal people and then hopefully help them thrive, we're going to have to start having a conversation about what is true. Now, from that, and this is one of the things that's got us all into the same space and basically on the same pages, to, to ask what is normal, you, which, is, which is a very 
dangerous word in my opinion, you first have to ask what's natural. And so when we got together and we started our first conversations, we, we recognized that mankind has been, uh, has strayed, well, you know, let's be honest here, it's been deliberately led away from everything that is natural <clears throat> could arguably be called normal. And so what is deemed normal now is actually very abnormal or one might say unnatural because abnormal might offend some and I, I don't apologize if it does, but we can certainly say unnatural. And the further we've strayed from those things, and that includes, um, you know, law or, or what is perceived as law where you began and rules. And so the work we've done, and when we came together and wanted to put together the Human Unleashed, which is a membership site um, where we teach pretty much everything we know, and we sat down and we started to discuss all the elements that make people unwell and all the remedies that heal them. Because we've never cured anyone, but we've certainly, uh, Phil and I, <clears throat> have helped thousands to heal themselves because that's the ultimate truth. And when we do help them, what happens is an awful lot of processes they go through and let's say their less than truth start to come up. They're um, who they are. They've been educated to be this or educated to be that and all these things start to come up. So when we did start recording the humanunleashed.com and all the episodes about all these things, we realized that actually we need to sit down and write a book to sort of paraphrase everything we do in the Human Unleashed and explain to ordinary good folk perhaps many pillars of deception that they were unaware of. And you've read the book, Greg, you know, you'll, you'll realize that and it resonated with you as it did with me as a, a young man that things weren't right. But do you know what happened to me, Greg, which started it? I had just passed my driving test at 17 and I pulled up to a junction with a little, you know, right hand turn and a, and a, um, a red line through it saying I couldn't turn right. And it occurred to me why I couldn't. You know, I just suddenly spatially, I came out of my body and looking at how bizarre is that that I can't, but of course I obeyed it. And yes, I agree that if it's going into a one-way road, that might not be a good idea. But that's where it all began. So I'll hand, you know, Graham, Graham's arrived now and because uh, we didn't have him on at first and he can catch up in a minute. But I want a John to jump in there because I know he's been through similar awakenings and questions and, <clears throat> and insights into the industry he was in. And he particularly has a love, as I do, for what is commonly called remedy or, or truly what law is and how to challenge the unnatural, um, let's say, shall we say, uh, craftsmanship of spells in the written language that is put across as acts as, as probably you do, Greg. So, so, John, do you want to take it from there? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Greg, thank you so much for having us on. Uh, greetings from the States, west of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, yeah, I... Greg, I think you and I probably had a very similar uh, um, path to where we're at today. And when when you were asking where did I sign up for this, I was in my in my own little eleven, twelve year old punk rock way was saying, you know, says who or or why. You know, I th th those were two questions I was always asking my, myself and the world when I was being told to do something, and not in an arrogant, uh, shitty way, just just. Kind of using Jeremy's, um, you know, no right turn sign thing as an example. It's just you start questioning these these rules and the and the uh, just the, just the playing fields that we we find ourselves on in, in life. And um, I have a lifelong um, career in the in the entertainment industry, music in particular, um, and I, I've always been a content creator, content producer. Um, and in the the music industry, I was very very blessed to um, start at the bottom and and towards the end uh, uh, be working amongst some of some of the industry's biggest names. And one thing that always struck me was how um, purposely scripted and produced every piece of content was in the entertainment industry. And and it, and it made sense in the entertainment industry, but um, as I climbed up the the industry ladder itself, and and I started to see the entire 
media industry. I, I, I saw the, the the news and 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 other things beyond entertainment, and it was also just as scripted, um, and, and produced and 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 manipulated for purpose as as the entertainment, the music industry was. Well, while this was while this was happening, um, my my wife Dawn um, has uh, has has been handicapped for about twenty years. She hasn't taken a step in over ten years. Uh, originally diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, um, I just took on the task of not just being her her, her husband and, and life partner, but kind of her general contractor to to get her better and. It just became apparent from from day one who I could and couldn't trust, and I and I quickly realized I could not trust the uh, what, what what we call the medical industry. And I make a very 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 distinct uh, separation and distinction between medical and health and wellness. Um, the, the the corporate for profit commercial medical industry was was just uh, it was it was just as scripted, corrupt, and produced as, as the entertainment industry was. And you can't help but, but also bump into the legal aspects of, of things, especially in, 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 the, uh, in the medical industry. You're always signing away rights and waivers and, 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 and such. And I just got very interested in who I was on paper, where I was on paper, and things like jurisdiction and um, consent and, and, and such. Those, those terms started to, to mean a whole lot more to me later in life. And, um, and when you're on that kind of a path, when you, when you realize the, the manipulation in, in, in media, in medicine, in, in government, in, in everything, and when, and when you realize the production and the scripting that's going on, and then you, you, you lay the, the legal and lawful, and obviously there's a difference between legal and lawful, um, when you lay those layers on top of things, it just, it's just this big multi-layered onion of bullshit, and you just have to keep peeling layers after layer after layer away to, to get to truths and, and facts and, and, and things that are real. And um, and I just uh, you, when when you're on those kind of journeys, you can't help but bump into people like like Phil and, and Ben and Graham and and, and Jeremy. And um, and so I just think we you know we life put us all in the same room, at the same ideological room, anyways, at the same time. And and we we all kind of came to the intersection of bullshit <laughs> and our various paths. And I and I think we just wanted to get it down on paper and and and, and get these. Um, Get these thoughts and these ideas out there to, to to other people because it's just it's the it's the, it's the most humbling, refreshing, and simple thing in the world to yeah. to just make somebody just make somebody else wake up and go. You know what? Yeah, maybe maybe I'm not who I thought I was. Maybe I'm not where I thought I was. Maybe there's maybe there's some specifics here. Maybe there's a little bit more freedom to life than I've been led to believe. And so, so here we are, and we're, 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 we're glad that this is resonating with as many people that, as it is, and we're just going to keep trying to be beacons of light and truth. And we're, we're not declaring we know anything. We just know who we are, and we know what, what is, what's possible out there. And we just want to help other people see that as well. Ben, do you want to come in at all at this early stage? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ian. Um, thanks for having us on, like everyone said. I, I think what's interesting for me is that it's, it's really fascinating when you look back over your life and you realize the, the earliest things and how poignant and significant they, they turn out to be. Because when I look back, and, and this rip process only really started in the last couple of years when, when I met these, these amazing guys, um, I've, I've realized that there has been a theme, um, and it's like an itch, you know, an itch in your mind, an itch in your soul that, that you can't, doesn't matter how much you scratch it, never really goes away that this, there was something bugging me. And it, it keeps, I mean, there's a reason why we chose the red pill revolution for the name of the book, because it's obviously inspired by the matrix. And I keep coming back to, to the meeting of Morpheus and Neo, and Morpheus says that there's something, you know, that's not sitting right in your mind. There's this question that you can't shake off. Um, and when I look back, it, it's 
it seems to make more and more sense now because I, I actually remember being a child aged about three and I was um, my parents identified that I was um, ridiculously smart for, for a little kid and they sent me to school when I was aged literally two or three and I used to have to sit quietly in a classroom and, and study stuff and I was always for the first seven or eight years I, I was generally in, in classes with kids a lot, a lot older than me and I used to I remember I used to sit there and I used to stare out of the window whenever the sun was shining because I wanted to be outside I knew in my heart I wanted to be outside in the sunshine um, now actually it makes a lot more sense why I wanted to be in the sunshine because now I understand Understand that the sunshine is the the sun. The energy from the sun is our complete source of, of of light and life and energy, and it's immensely healing as well. But that took me another forty five years to discover. Um, and I think that my whole life, from those earliest memories, has been to explore, uh, uh, trying to find what it means to be authentically human. And. Um, that's led me all over the place in spirituality and, and organized religion and disorganized religion and everything in between and you know fascination with survival and bushcraft and I've always been drawn to the ancestral you know anything that comes on that's to do with Vikings or people living in the jungle and finding their own food I've just been irresistibly drawn to that stuff and you know foraging growing your own food butchering your own food and self-sufficiency all of this stuff has, has inspired me throughout my whole life. And now it all makes sense. And it's the weirdest thing that I've come together with these four other guys. And, we, and you know, like everyone said, we've, we've followed very, very different routes to get to this point. And then suddenly we find ourselves at the same crossroads. We've come from every point of the compass. And now, and you know, we're, we're all roughly the same age, you know, we're all around our 50s. And, and then we find ourselves standing there going, ah, oh, Hey, how you doing? You know, it's nice to meet you. And uh, what brought you here? Um, and that but makes each... it most definitely spiritual, don't you find, Ben? Because you know, when I grew up, I thought my surname was Null because I heard it so much often. And I think all of us, and I'll give it back to you, I think all of us that never sat well. And no matter what direction we've come from, it was always looking for what would be incorrectly called the alternative view, I would say. But we were actually more intrigued with this over here. And it turned out to be almost always against what everything else had been said. Don't you find that? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's labeled as the alternative, this, that or the other, as in non-mainstream, non-orthodox, unorthodox. But in reality, I think it's, it's authentic. You know, what is authentic humanity? And you mentioned it earlier on that there's this universal distaste of lying and liars. And the reason is, I think, because it simply goes against natural law to deceive. It's just everyone knows it's not right, even the people who do it compulsively. But what's fascinating is that each of us have, have had our own different journeys that have brought us to this point where suddenly the we stand there and point and say the emperor has no clothes. You know, that this is all bullshit and everyone has to well not you don't have to but once you realize that things as they are presented are not absolutely not as they are and you don't need to prove it because your your the discernment in your soul can just tell you and that's the thing it's like for those of us out there who have got this itch where you just know something's not right you know, and, and the, the world will tell you that, that everything that's right with you is wrong with you, you know, but we, you need to trust that, that piece of you, of your, your heart, your spirit, whatever it is, um, and, and trust it to lead you. Cause I mean, it's, it's led us all together and suddenly life makes a, a lot more sense. And I think through the process of writing this book as well and combining, you know, these five incredibly different life experiences has, has been, um, a real process of simplification for me. You know, life seems a lot more understandable, even though I have embraced, in the process, I've embraced the fact that I know a lot less than I ever thought I knew before. I was really clever and smart and remembered a lot of crap facts when I was younger. 
Um, and now most of those I simply don't need because I know what, what really matters is the same. It, well, biologically, emotionally, spiritually, we are practically identical to our caveman Paleolithic ancestors. And what matters to us really fundamentally deep down is the same as what mattered to them. And they didn't have air travel and iPhones and all this and the Internet and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so the, it's, it's bizarre. It's bizarre, you know. Jeremy and Phil coming through the, the through through healing and and you know John realizing that the the music industry was not ha how it appeared and Graham unfortunately is, isn't able to to join but you know his experience actually came through the finance financial markets when he realized that that everything that he'd been told about money was also untrue and a facade. But yeah, it's 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 weird. We we've all just like found ourselves suddenly on the outside of the system and gone. Ah, oh, okay, that's interesting. Can I jump in there a bit because Ben's made such great points there that's reminded me of stuff. I mean, I've I, I won't go on a, a, too much about about my history or, or anything because there's a couple of other interviews I've done on on Greg's channel here about uh, diet and about uh, spiritual awakening and that kind of thing, and. I, I think what's so great about about working with these guys is is the 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 always the willingness to be wrong because we've been wrong so many times. You know, I studied diet for decades and I was wrong. I was into spirituality for decades and I just caught got caught up in the superficial nature of it that I didn't realize until one tiny moment in 2006 where the whole world changed and suddenly there it was and. And, and and this whole present situation, I think, that we sort of updated the book for in the end, uh, uh, the whole COVID situation, you know, it's it, it's it's brought out the fact that we have lost our intuition. We've lost our sovereignty. We can't think for ourselves anymore. And this whole thing, this whole existence is just layers of an onion. And you keep on peeling it back. You keep on peeling it back. If somebody says they're claiming to find that have the truth, then be very suspicious of them, because all we can do, and what we've found, and all our our aim is to peel those layers of the onion, maybe a couple of layers ahead of some of the people who are reading our stuff or listening to us, and that we can maybe alleviate some of their suffering and give them some of their power back, because these days there is a new deity, and that's science. And it isn't science. It's not true science. It's scientism. And all of this stuff that's being pushed on the mainstream media as science really isn't science. Because, I mean, you, you know, the, this, this extraordinary quote the other day when, you know, um, um, uh, Dr. Falsey in, in the States, who's been pushing this whole narrative, um, it's, it, finally it all blew up in his face and, and we won't go into the layers of the onion there but I only believe that that's the first layer of the onion about what's going on there but he said if you criticize Dr. Fauci you criticize science and and it was a hell of a statement that I think has really isn't that an oxymoron has, yeah absolutely it's completely blown him up because once people start saying that and equating themselves with the whole of science, they obviously do not understand the scientific method, That's which is to always try and prove that you're wrong, you know, and, and look for some, or at least not be able to prove that you're right. And, and to claim that science is settled and that kind of thing, and how it's being forced on us and every newspaper headline that says scientists say or science shows, and, and everybody suddenly jumps on it. We are following the science, and they're not, they're, you know, on the TV, and they're not following the science at all. And we won't get into that whole subject, you know, and, and get your channel shut down. But if if you, if you want to have a look at our Human Unleashed one, we've got a lot of chats about about that. And I know you've done some amazing work on that, Greg. Actually, well done for still having your channel up with some of the stuff you said. But absolutely spot on. But I I, I just think that it, it's a matter of just helping people to alleviate some of their suffering take back their sovereignty and not be so so what's the word so controlled by the controllers you know and just blowing in the wind of that dogma that's being put out of that that square box in the corner um just turn it off smash it up and and, and there are just so f far fewer problems and this is what we're trying to get get across in in the book 
because it's very difficult to look at, at the modern day and see that we are being fooled. But if you look back into other scenarios in history, which we, we, we've sort of illustrated in the book, and you can see how things have gone horribly wrong. But at the time, people didn't think they were going so horribly wrong and they were being duped. So to look at history and not forget history and to see how it relates to the present and just kind of free yourself up. And it, it creates such a sense of freedom. It just loses the, uh, it just dissipates the stress that we have about modern life. Most people, I imagine, they turn on the TV and they're terrified. Now, I think all the guys here, if they do turn on the TV, which we probably seldom do, we just burst out laughing or just do a, a, a complete face palm because it's clearly nonsense. And to, to have that kind of freedom is wonderful. And, and that's what we're aiming, really, is to, for this book, to, 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 to illustrate to the people who are just kind of teetering and thinking, maybe there's something wrong. You know, because I saw it in, in, in the whole diet world that I'd studied for 30 years. And I thought, hang on a minute, when I got really sick and what, what, what everything I thought wasn't helping me. And in the spiritual world where, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd sat in lotus position and meditated three hours a day for 10 years and nothing had really happened. And then suddenly in letting go of all of that, then everything that I'd always wanted was there. And, and, and to, to, for these people who are sort of thinking, maybe there's something a little bit wrong. We don't dive too deep down all the really dark rabbit holes, but we do just lead people into thinking, yeah, your intuition is right. And to value intuition over science these days, nothing wrong with looking at science and seeing if it's genuine and it's not funded and all of that to back up what your intuition says. But we've lost that intuition, and that's what the controllers want. And that's what we're trying to help people to regain. So that's why we did the book. That concludes part one of our interview. Part two will be available soon in the subscribers area at legalizefreedom.com. Legalizefreedom.com.